the reactions are not uh, unexpected. Even in the family, if a large one, you cannot all see things the same way. The only fundamental thing I will let everybody here know is that uh, since 1951, when Afeniferi was founded, there has been a two, two wing idea in Yoruba land. And uh, from 1954 to 1966, the House of Afeniferi, House of Awolowo prevailed over the other faction of Yoruba nation. And up to today, the 1954-1966 tendency in Yoruba land has prevailed against the other faction because it was based on principle. It was based on what is fair. It was also based on deciding based on our own mind. In this instance too, we have two tendencies in Yoruba land, no problem. Time will bear us out. Time will decide who is right. But one thing I believe is that uh, anything based on sound logical principles is a timeless uh, doctrine that will outlive all of us. So never mind that uh, there was some, um, there will always be. Even now, look, let us not worry about the reaction in the Yoruba land. The reaction will be from the, uh, from our brethren, from the Fulanese in the North. Historically, nobody wants the Igbos to see eye to eye with the Yorubas and vice versa. It's been the norm in the Nigerian Federation. So when you see the topmost echelon of Yoruba society deciding pointedly based on rational argument to say we are supporting our so-called enemy. You can't expect that to, to just uh, pass without a, without a whimper. So as we go on in this talk today, I will elaborate. But I want to assure everybody that um, if we didn't expect any, any violent reaction, it means we don't know Nigeria at all. Thank you very much. Uh, we, need to, we need to make a very good clarification. Sometimes we'll take a unidimensional approach into a very multivariate environment. And that's why we always uh, make mistakes. We are, we are one issue society, one issue. But there are many issues. And if any of us who read algebra, you have to have so many variables. You have to integrate before you can get an holistic outcome. The Afeniferi body decided on this principle far back as January, 2022. There was no Peter or Biden at all. It was during the meeting of the Southern and Middle Belt Leadership Forum that comprised Ohaneze, comprised Pandev from the South, comprised Afeniferi, and then the Middle Belt Forum. It was there and then that Fenferi said, all things considered, 
we are favoring the Igbo nation to produce the candidate. Whoever the Igbos want, even if it's a dog, is what we shall support. And we shall not support anybody from Yoruba land, whoever it was. That principle was already decided before, Obi was even PDP at that time. It was not even in Libor. It's a fundamental principle, it's a fundamental decision to say, mm. it's the turn of the Igbos. Even if it's far, far mm. before Tinubu said, it may look on that I'm, it's my turn. See, whatever you do that is right, <laughs> it doesn't matter when you say it, right is the right. Right is the right. So it just happened now that uh, Peter Obi seems to be the inheritor of the fundamental decision that was made, I would say far back in November in a Feniferi meeting. It was only in January that it was announced at the Southern Middle Bay Leadership Forum. So it happens to be that Obi is a very good candidate. So if he succeeds, it's a plus that we didn't bring the, we, we want the first 11 from every ethnic nation. We don't want third 11. We don't want uh, uh, 28th 11 of any football team. We want the best of every nationality to come forward so that we can really aspire based on competence, based on ability. Don't you feel a character to bring the most useless person, a drunkard, to say feather character. The right feather character is to bring out your very best. And if you practice feather character that way, we will not be where we are now, certainly. It has no room for nepotism. It has no room for my brother or my sister. Put the best forward. So we are quite lucky that Peter Obi appears to be appears to be. So it's good enough. Peter Obi is good. It's a delight to see Peter Obi be so, so so integrated with Yoruba. Even the what he wore yesterday. You not know it's an evil man. He wore Danshiki Yoruba dress yesterday. I cannot see a sign of pretense in, in, in his attire. He's now becoming at home. He was in one of the first palace yesterday. He was in Undo State yesterday. And yes. he was in a Feniferi event to honor the deputy leader of Fine Ferry, about like who was 80 years yesterday. He was there. If nobody tells anybody, you will not assume it's an evil person. He just blended with the, all the events, with his uh, dress sense, with his. He uh, 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 just he just blend with the crowd. So, you see the effect of what happened on Monday. It's uh, open the it's open the doors for integration. It's open the doors for Peter B to feel at home in Yoruba land. It's gratifying that he was able to. I don't know who his protocol people were, but they were able to to visit our new office yesterday, and it was received very well, very well. You see, all these things are symbols, but symbols are good. Symbols are good. So uh, uh, it's uh, the Afeniferi uh, endorsement on, 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 on Monday pointedly. In fact, we wanted Papa Depanjo to raise many issues in that press conference of Monday. If I did a draft for him, on other issues. But he said, look, this one overrides all other issues. 
for instance, we were to talk about the census plan for next year. There is going to be a national census in April 2023. Mm. It's a very bad event. How can you do census in the same time when election is still, is still on? Mm. We wanted to raise that, but Robert Banjo said, look, there's time to raise that. Let's solve this bit of big thing without any doubt in anybody's mind at all. So it was a single issue press conference. No other issue was raised. We had four or five issues to be raised in the draft I submitted. But about what I just said, and we're not in alone. The executive met and said, look, let us, mm. let this, this one override every other thing. They can do censors anyhow. It will never be legitimate anyway, it doesn't matter. The issue is to get things right. And so it's already having impact. Just wait until maybe another week or two when the news really hits the north. Then you will start seeing, oh, Yorubas are wicked to Ibos, Ibos are wicked to Yorubas. And then just to scuttle, scuttle the handshake. But I can tell you, only God knows tomorrow, but as a human being, I know something new is coming. The decision at the Southern Middle Bed Leadership Forum meeting in January was to the effect that all candidates this time around must come from the South. It was written down, it was communicated to PDP and to all parties that every person running now should be from the South. Eight years of Northern rule should now be replaced by a Southern rule. At that time, Peter, um, Atiku was even in Dubai, it's not even in Nigeria. He was still hiding there. <laughs> that knocks out Atiku automatically. Atiku is not in the reckoning at all because it cannot be, no matter what, that a Fulani man will hand over baton to a Fulani person. It cannot be. If they try it, there will be no peace in Nigeria. There will be no peace. Every minute, every day, a Northern candidate rules after May next year in Nigeria will be a day, will be a moment of, of upheaval. It cannot be. Thank so, you. So, so, so let me finish. So, uh, Atiku is, is disqualified. And Chief Adama, you mentioned it too in his speech. That article doesn't make sense. Now, as for, as for Tinubu, we know he's had a long standing uh, ambition, but Yorubas have a sense of fairness. We cannot say because he's our own that we just say we will support him. If he wins, it means he has support from wherever, but not from the mainstream Yoruba nation. I can show you that. That leaves Peter will be still. Thank you so very Don't much. Okay, so now, um, are you convinced that Nigerians are ready to vote in credible candidates in 2023? Let me comment on the last speaker. See, Nigeria, we live on lies and cliches. In Abuja here, hmm? There is a place called Abaji, very rural. If you drive through, nobody can tell me that Abaji is more populated than Gwagwalada in Abuja. But when the election comes, they will collate the results for Amak, for Kubwa, 
Then the last minute, they just say about this, just, they just give a big figure. It's rigging, it's rigging. It's rigging to announce figure from the rural area. Let me give another, another, another instance. If you go to Nasarawa State here, Karo, close to Abuja, dense population, almost all the people in Borno and Yobe have emptied into Nasarawa State. Mm. When the election comes now, Borno will maintain the same 3 million votes. Yobe will maintain the same 2 million votes based on the census of MPC, which is fake. And they will still give Nasarawa 1 million. But you travel from here to Akwanga now in Abuja and see the people. We are all living lies. How can people be in the bush where there is no fast, nothing? And then you say there are, there are 10 million mm. there. And you are in the city where you at least you see markets. How can you compare the market in Abaji with the one in Gravalada and say Abaji has more people in the rural area? <laughs> We're just living on lies. It's all like when we wake up, we know the truth. Now to your question. This is an interesting time. We are lucky this time around that we have five months to election. In the past, it will be just one month to the time. Rush, 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 rush. We have time now for suffering to percolate into our DNA. There is time now for suffering, for us to feel it. Yesterday, CBN increased interest rate to borrow money now at 26%. It becomes 30% now. You have to pay more your loan. All prices will go up. Dollar is now 725. Pounds, mm. maybe 830, 840. Let all this one sink in, sink in. November, December, January, February. If our suffering is not enough, okay. It's okay, I have no problem at all. Wow. If, if you look through all the suffering of inflation, you know, and then people still say, oh, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's have a tickle who is sharing money, big money. People share money during the primaries. If people say this is what they want, me, I'll just stay in my house. I might even just leave Nigeria to go and rest overseas. I won't pity Nigerians again, totally. But I'm happy that the next five months, the damage done to our psyche, to our, to our being, mm. will, will really aggregate. Mm. <clears throat> I believe some people, be, they were almost faint when they are going to cast their ballot in that February. If they still vote for the establishment uh, party, I will say, Yoruba will say, Otoni no me, I'm okay, I'm, I'm glad. No worry about all. If the poor cannot feel, if they don't know, if they cannot see, if they cannot hear, and then let them go ahead. If they want 5,000, they want 10 naira to vote. Believe me, from February next year, if the election goes in the wrong way, in my own conviction, I will not pity anybody again. But there's enough mm. time now for people to see that there has to be a cause correction. There has to be a change to try something new. It may not be the best, but we have to try something new. Open that God will favor us. But if we keep going the road, the old way, you already know the result. That's my take. All right, so Providence has placed a big burden on the shoulder of Peter Obi. He could mismanage it to our detriment. He could manage it for us to be lucky. 
I've expressed views that yeah. Peter will be asked to create a message that will resonate with the people. People are not very stupid. Everybody, look, this is a school fees season now. Every mm. person now is paying school fees for his or her children in secondary schools, in primary schools. Mm. The most middle class, the age of 30 and 40 in Nigeria, they have two or three kids and they mm. are paying school fees now. And the salary is the same since about two years. The cost mm. has gone up. They will still pay school fees in January for second time. So if Obi can surround himself with people who have practical things to say to the people, your school fee, all private, all school now are private, forget the university, all private schools now, they've displaced the government schools. Mm. So if that True. is not a point of suffering for you, and nobody can give you the message that, look, how are you faring? In FCT, there is over 700 private schools. Mm. That means somebody is paying school fees for them to be functioning. Is it very good? Is that not a source of pain? No. So if Peter Obi can surround himself with people who can interpret things in very simple ways, Mm. where you know that your life is being touched. You vote with anger. I don't want this thing again. You throw your vote into the box for a change. But if you say, oh, oh, production to consumption, people don't understand that. What is, what is consumption? What's production? That's big grammar. That's big grammar. Somebody has to help him interpret these things into parameters that people can relate with. And they also have different messages for different parts of Nigeria. The message that will resonate in the Niger Delta is not the same that will resonate in Yoruba land. They have to have people, in fact, when we say federal character, it means how people from each area to interpret their pains to you don't just come and still say free education in, in, in Casina or free education in, in, in Safara. Or you say you're going to turn a land to crops in Bayesa. They don't have land there now. If you are preaching the production of, uh, of crops in uh, Bayesa, you have, they can't understand. It doesn't resonate. So you see, when you have people around you who know the problem of every, in Yoruba land now, the problem is education. Two of my relations, one left yesterday, one left today. So UK, they pay 15,000 mm. pounds. They paid. The, the Yoruba just want education at all costs. Right from time for World War in the 1950s. It's our own industry. And knowledge is very good. But when you now go to Casina, they want to farm millet and maize. They want fertilizer. So you have to have segmented messages that will resonate with different areas. You must be problem solver to a community before people can say, ah, I see myself in you. And I see you in myself. But to just all rally and raise somebody's hand in the stadium, say, oh, be forever. Oh, <laughs> be for, 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 for year 2015. So then you are not sending any message. So OB has five months to bring people that will translate the hardship that we are now into simple language that people can really relate with. He has to do that. You have to interpret. Restructuring doesn't mean, oh, restructuring. for that's restructuring. We have to restructure our lives. To be practical, we have been living a very wasteful life in this country. So mm -hmm. I wish, uh, so if, if there's a good message, not just slogan, 
Then people want goodness for themselves. They are not stupid. They may not be able to speak English. They may not be able to get why, but they know where the shoe is pinching. All of us sleep on the same bed. We know whether we can sleep without light. Mm -hmm. Mosquito is biting us. We know now. We know. So you have to have a quick wins when it comes in, if at all it comes into governance. Once you have a message that resonates. Uh, okay, let me get an example. In the US, Trump is not just popular, popular because is keen into the white supremacist group. The whites are afraid that the blacks and the Latinos are coming to displace them. So he just keyed into that, that you whites, you own America. Whether it's diversity, whether it's uh, the stealing money, they don't care. He's protecting the white supremacists in America. And they follow him. Up to now, they still follow him. I wish somebody can interpret our problems in such a practical way. <clears throat> like people will say, I will die with you. That's the problem, that's the challenge. All right, now I, I think uh, that's a very uh, beautiful point that, that you, you made there, Dr. Um, Fapo Hunda. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, something else, uh, <clears throat> there are two, two aspects to it. The first one is economic reconstruction of Nigeria. People focus on the political aspect, but mm. economic imperative has made restructuring now to be unavoidable. We created Nigeria based on oil and unlimited money, 36 states, 774 local governments with chairmen. The local government has a parliament, so 774 parliaments. Mm. Each state has 25, 30 as of assembly members. We have almost 1,000 yes. state assembly drawing salary. We have 44 ministries in Abuja, 750 parastatals, all based on when we are used, used to sell crude oil at 2.3 million barrels per day. All this based on where we were. In 1952, we were 55 million. 55 million population. Okay, it's now said that we are 200 million. Our income is still 2 million barrels of oil. So the government is borrowing now to pay salaries. If you are a man, you are staying in a five bedroom duplex. You are working in CBN, but you've lost your job. No salary again. You are now being uh, Uber taxi. Will you still remain in a five bedroom duplex? Want to pack out and look for a two bedroom in uh, in uh, in Karu. Until you can sort out your issues. That's restructuring. That's restructuring. We are broke. The country is bankrupt. We can't continue living the way we are living again. We can't afford more than uh, uh, one camera legislator. Just maybe, maybe not up to even 60 senators, no more after of reps. Which loss are we making again? Which loss? I'm making loss. And all the states that were created. They are all avenues of waste. Governors have turned them into headmasters. They just pay the salary. The whole money belongs to them. They just spend it the way they like. Governors are now emperors in all the taxi states. They spend money to do election. They pay for you for your form. If they don't like it, they won't pay for your form. Government money. So economically, we have to restructure Nigeria to from away from wastefulness, to live now like a human being. That's, that's it. But the political aspect, look, 
Nigeria is not a nation. Nigeria is a country of many nations. And all of us, when you are within your community, there is organic relationship. Among Yorubas now, nobody can tell me, oh, I can't see Yoruba person because policeman, the Yoruba man, police in Yoruba land, he cannot because we know his family now. But a policeman is from uh, Sokoto and is now the DPO in my town in Elisha Ocean State. So I have my to relate with him. And then you create so many ministries. Look, in the Ministry of Agriculture alone, there are nine departments, federal ministry. Each one has office in taxi states. There is federal agri, federal forestry, federal livestock, federal pest control, federal rural development. Each one has office in taxi states, headed by level 16 officer, and they are drawing salaries. And federal government does not have one hectare of land that they are cultivating. None. <laughs> None. In Abuja here, the Department of Fisheries, there is Jabi Lake. They are not fishing in that Jabi Lake. There are almost 40 of them with masters in aquaculture in the sectorate in area level. They are Jabi Lake. They are not fishing. Too many things are wrong in our system based on those days when money was no object. We are broke. If I beat uh, Peter or B, I am going to communicate, whoever wins, let me not personalize it. If we don't reduce federal civil servants by at least one third next year, mm. we cannot fly. They are not doing anything. Go to they are not doing anything. They arrive at work at 10 o'clock, and by two, they are all going away. Federal civil servants. Hmm. Only three people are working in Abuja, the PAMSEC, Director of Finance, Director of Procurement. Those are the only people who are working in any federal ministry. Procurement to produce tender documents, finance to write memos on it, PAMSEC to write hmm. memo for the minister and the executive council. All of that, civil servants are sidelined. Let me give one more point. Let me not talk too much. One more point. There's a software called IPPIS. It's a software that is used to pay all federal civil servants, whether you are in quarter penny or you are in a bad norm. You are paid centrally. If you don't go to work for the last three months, nobody knows. You just keep getting a lot from Abuja. You just get, getting a lot. When I was in service, your local director can query you, you are absent and stop your salary. Now, everything is centralized. Every centralized. We can continue like that. Too many reasons for us to restructure Nigeria. Too many. The states have to be collapsed into regions. They will be able to go back to become provinces or districts so that you can save money. We don't have money again. Thank you. Wow. That was quite an, an Nothing really can be done until we have a change of government because look, in the last two years, is there any single kidnapper that have been, that have been executed and jailed? Is there any bandit that have been arrested and uncopped and tried? So we are in the process of impunity. And uh, so sorry that uh, communities are suffering pains of displacement and all that. The more reason why I said earlier on that when we are voting in February, you vote your pains, you vote your frustration. Nobody should sell you 5,000 when your king men have been dispossessed of their land. So there are many uh, points of contact for you to be angry with the system. That you throw your vote to the ballot in the right place, not the wrong place, though. Until the new government comes in. And this is the challenge of where, whether we like it or not. I support Peter Opie. 
first, even before I finish ferry, I'm one of the strategists there, so I don't need to hide it. Of all the candidates, the best. So we have to now tell him. I've complained to, to my friend, uh, JJB TV. I've not seen signs of movement to prepare blueprints on what will happen. If you win and you don't have the right answers, you'll be overwhelmed by the congratulation message mm -hmm. from all the other state of the world. You have now have the 500 SEL as official vehicle. When you enter the villa, hmm, the sleep is different. You, but if you prepare very well now, all this we need to have a sense of community that have been displaced. We need to have it. We need to have many sensors, community by community, to show facts and figures, not just talking. Very, very important. So maybe I just intervene because I know we are rounding up now. We are no, no more time. The last week I talk about what are we going to do? We are all marooned. Yet, who is the power that be? If in this forum now, we agree to launch a federalist movement, we shouldn't wait for Peter or B or whoever wins alone. Suppose, look, in 1998, there was G18, there was G34. They formed the same group, even to confront military regime. So bad that the body became PDP. We need a movement now, in the next five months, that will articulate what we really want and give a blueprint to whoever we want to say, this is what we want. Then it will be easier for them to say, approved. But if you are waiting for him, with all the problems of uh, money, IMF, foreign exchange, and all that, he may not have press of mind. They said start a committee for one year to do thinking again. We're wasting time. Mm -hmm. In any case, in Afghani Ferry, we have tried now. We have Ohani Ferry, Ohanese Afghani Ferry. People might say, why? The problem of Nigeria started with the Igbos and Yorubas in 1948. It's a fact of history. Up to 1951, that's when the Igbos have been quarreling with Yorubas and vice versa. If we don't solve that Igbo Yoruba problem, others cannot really be resolved. So we are not marginalizing Niger Delta, Pandef, or marginalizing Middle Belt. Historically, if the Igbos agree with the Yorubas, what we are going to agree upon can never be again the interest of Pandef, cannot be again the interest of Middle Belt. And what do we want? We want to go back to regions. Each region will have its own identity. You're able to do many things in your own region. Like you run your own house now. I run my own house. You may not want your children to go to school. That's your choice. You may want your children to be lawyers. That's your choice. I want my own to be doctor. That's my choice. When we reorganize Nigeria into regions, everybody will have its own identity. And then you live by them. You'll be ruled by your own people. Your police will be from your own people. Even your military will be from your own people too. Only that we are going to have the flag of Nigeria. Even in 1960, Western region had a consular office in London, separate from that of Nigeria. I can see the Yorubas having their own consulate separate from Nigerian High Commission in London to take care of Yorubas who are students in UK. There are very few Fulani students in UK. That's a fact. There are more Igbos in the Southeast Asia than Yorubas. That's a fact. So the Igbo nation might want to have a consulate in Malaysia, Indonesia. So we have to do things based on what we want for ourselves. Then nobody is uh, disturbed. You do your own. We are still Nigerian. We'll be good neighbors. 
So now, what am I saying now? We need to articulate what we want. We are working on it in Afeniferi. I'm very sure about it because I'm, I'm partly involved in it. We are having documents on how the thing would look like. We are just trying to dot the I's and crawl the T's. So we want all other person in this forum now to think along that way. If you are going to be a region in Niger Delta, how many regions? It could be two regions, Western Niger Delta, Eastern Niger Delta. It could be two regions. In the Middle Belt, I can see two regions too. Because Kebi, Niger, and Kwara, they are mainly Muslims. Plato, Benue, Adamawa, and Taraba. They are mainly Christians. Whether we like it or not, don't let us shy away. You are a Christian, you are a Christian, you are a Muslim. Muslim. I'm Yoruba, I cannot mm -hmm. be an evil person. It is not the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't let us keep deceiving ourselves that, oh, we don't want to hear Yoruba, we don't want to hear. We say lie. When I respect you as who you are, you respect me who I am. Where is the conflict? But we are pretending and we are cheating each other. You know? That won't work. So finally, because I don't want to waste your time too much, we need to form a group now that will articulate how we want a new Nigeria to run. So that when the call comes out, we'll be ready to answer the call. And whoever wins will make his task very simple because we'll have already agreed on positions. Example, Okuns or Kogi, they don't want to belong to North Central anymore. The governors of Para, they don't want to belong to North Central anymore. I've spoken to them. They want to be part of Western region. We need to articulate it. So we need to work. Nobody is stopping now. If you, if you really want to, well, let's stop lamenting, lamenting. Let's work. We are working at Fenifery. Thank you. <laughs>